Hey guys, a very good morning. So today's lecture will be on recent advances in mat and uh, materials in prosthodontics. So by the end of the lecture, uh, you must be able to understand what the what are the recent advances um, in uh, complete dentures, removal partial dentures, and fixed partial dentures as well. And uh, in the process, I will also help you understand the difference between the older techniques and the newer techniques, and uh, also. Uh, we would like for you to know what are the effects of using these uh, recent advances. So, in as a part of my uh, introduction, so we know that the scientific and technological basis of dentistry has been expanding uh, rapidly worldwide. Uh, we know if you look back at the history of restorative dentistry, there was a time where uh, elephant uh, you know, uh, husks and, uh, you know, ivory that has been uh, extracted, then gold and different metals and, uh, you know, different kinds of materials were used as replacement for what was lost. And earlier, even um, for extraction, there was a time where, you know, they were just uh, even in our early, uh, I, I remember a time where, you know, my grandparents, uh, they advised just tie a, uh, you know, a thread around your uh, milk tooth and just extract it. You know, that, that's the way uh, how dentistry was practiced earlier. But we have been advancing from all of these, uh, you know, kind of practices, uh, which have been uh, very simple to a much easier and much quicker and less uh, invasive procedures uh, in the current world. You know that the whole wor uh, world is going to a rapid phase of expansion in uh, terms of technology. So the same technology has been used in the uh, field of dentistry as well. So uh, we're going to look at some of the, uh, you know, the recent advances in our uh, field that is prosthodontics. And uh, so looking at complete dentures in the first uh, phase. So complete dentures, you know that uh, it's definitely, it's usually a five uh, steps appointment. You know that you make the primary impression and then after that you have to prepare a cast, then your border mounting, then your uh, jaw relations and teeth arrangement and then flasking, right? So there are five steps. From that part of your complete denture fabrication, of five appointments has been completely transformed or moved we have moved into an era where you can just obtain a digital impression where we can use an intraoral scanner and scan the tissues so your primary impression and your border molding is all done in one phase yeah and uh, also the uh, jaw relations also have, has been uh, uh, recorded during the same phase. So in the functional moments when the patient is moving his jaw to the right or to the left, what happens is uh, the temporomandibular joint movements are also recorded during the scan. Yeah, so uh, at least three steps have been avoided. Okay, these are the kind of uh, advances that we see in complete dentures. So your impression phase is completely uh, removed and uh, you have a virtual uh, you know cast that's uh, that's created on your computer software so there's no need for making a uh, you know a model as such but there is also another way of doing it that is like you obtain a digital impression and then this uh, impression will be obtained by the uh, person in the laboratory who's working upon this particular case uh, and this uh, scanning the report which they have obtained, the stitched images of the scan will be uh, uh, will be looked over, will be studied, and then from this a cast will be poured, or other way for a cast will be uh, made, or other ways. Then uh, the other way of doing it is that you can make a conventional impression for a cast and send it to the laboratory, and then they would scan that cast, and from there you go ahead with the uh, digital way of doing complete denture fabrication. So in this image, if you see that, uh, you know, uh, the impressions have been recorded and then they've been sent to the laboratory and uh, after which the uh, during the impression phase itself, this is a uh, this is a part of the uh, there's something called as Baltic system, which is 
the newest one so in this kind of a technique they also record the temporomandibular joint movements they try to establish the uh, vertical uh, there are different ways of doing it okay but um, it depends upon the kind of software that you're going to use the kind of technology that is available for you and uh, the lab support is most important for you right so based on that uh, you take a call as to which procedure has to be uh, done and uh, so as you look at the picture d so uh, once you've obtained the impression of the tissue surface then you uh, and uh, you know the vertical height so the computer software itself builds up the height and then it selects the, the kind of teeth that are required and this is how in your 3d printing uh, with the indentation of the teeth uh, the, the this mold is also available in the software itself and the teeth are inserted and they are fixed in these indentations and that's how you know your uh, denture looks like and the fab and the finishing and the polishing is also completely done by your uh, uh, you know a milling machine and then you uh, and if you still want to uh, hand polish it it can also be done so by the use of um, the advanced technology what are we doing you are reducing the potential errors that can happen while you're doing it manually and also the processing errors like expansion shrinkage and distortion of the impression materials sometimes you also know that you might not have the time to pour your impression immediately and you might have to look at another patient so uh, and um, you know you you don't have that leeway right so in those kind of cases these kind of technologies are very very helpful and you know it it is it is increasing the ease of doing uh, complete denture processes uh, it, it reduces the effort that is required to complete the procedure and also the accuracy that you obtain with uh, the, uh, the processes is much more better when compared to that of the uh, convention. Yeah, but although, um, uh, you know, so many recent advances are there, however, just only few studies have been published uh, because, you know, because of, uh, because of the cost that is uh, involved in uh, digital dentistry, you know, all the patients will not be able to effort for the cost of such kind of dentures. And uh, yeah, also, uh, you know that edentialist jaws represent a mucosa-based uh, clinical situation involving like uh, mo uh, movable areas movable tissues especially in the vestibule and uh, also the smooth surface uh, textures uh, covered by the saliva all of these have been uh, difficulties for uh, impression making so that is why there has been an attempt to uh, digitalize the system uh, wherein you know all of these will not be a hindrance because we know that uh, mucosa definitely the, sorry the saliva definitely interferes with impression making and uh, you know sometimes like when especially when you're using light body impression materials yeah it can be uh, an uh, issue so intraoral scanner has a, a to an extent has overcome many difficulties in uh, impression making as you see in this slide i would like to uh, explain to you how the process of digital uh, uh, processes fabrication is done so uh, we need to scan the maxillary arch and uh, then also the complete denture uh, processes the lower arch okay so I, I as i look at the picture i can see that it's a uh, com complete denture processes of course you will be seeing a lot of patients who will say that i'm very comfortable with one of my dentures and i want to replace only one denture you would have definitely come across such kind of patients okay so this is a scan retractor so you retract the mucosa up uh, and you place a retractor and then you keep your intraoral scanner and this is how your uh, uh, maxilla looks like uh, at the end of the scan each area by area is scanned and they all form together stitched images which are in the software combined and they form the complete image of the maxilla and also the scan of the mandibular denture is also done and after which the interocclusion uh, record can be made in the patient mouth itself so uh, in between this uh, uh, you know the the lower denture teeth and also the upper tray there is an interocclusion record material a silicon material is injected 
on the surface on the occlusal surface of the lower denture and then the patient is asked to bite in his or her centric so once a centric relation record has also been obtained that is uh, you know uh, you can observe in this image so you can cut off like this make a window of the putty impression that you have uh, obtained from the previous uh, scan yeah and uh, you can see the uh, see and record the vertical dimension once you notice that the vd uh, of occlusion the vdo uh, sorry the vdr is ha has been established you know that this is the exact vertical dimension these images are again uh, scanned and they are transferred to the after which a virtual virtual articulator is used by the software itself to align the upper maxillary arch and the lower dentulous uh, sorry the the lower uh, edentulous arch with the complete denture processes is oriented on the virtual articulator and the settings are changed according to the uh, tm tmd scan and then uh, so once it is scanned the teeth arrangement is also done likewise so in 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 this you the once the teeth arrangement has been done um, this is a milled denture base so uh, there are two ways of doing it as i showed in the previous image you can mill only the denture base itself and you can have indentations on the denture base where uh, 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 manually the teeth are fixed into those spaces or this is also a technique of like how you do the fpds so what you do is you you get your mill denture with teeth uh, tooth preparations like this and on which ceramic teeth or different acrylic teeth can be cemented in uh, the to in, in onto the denture so when in this process what is the difference is that while you're trying to cement one by one one tooth after the other it gives you a more natural look uh, a natural aesthetic appearance so it makes it look more like a natural dentition rather than like a artificial processes so once it has been completed it is placed in the patient mouth and it is adjusted accordingly if there are any slight over uh, extensions or if there is a, a freedom uh, record that freedom relief that, uh, that has been required so you can have a look at the final denture processes so uh, that's how you do it and then this is how your virtual articulator looks like for any processes what they do is they they scan or the record the temporomandibular joint movements and these movements are transferred to the software and based on the type of processes that you are going to do uh, you will the the virtual articulator itself will uh, mount the upper the maxillary and the mandibular models that you have already scanned and sent to the lab or um, or the virtual images that you are going to obtain with the intraoral scanner so then coming to recent advances in fixed partial dentures so in fixed partial dentures it is more of a cad cam based dentistry and uh, i'm sure you must be aware of uh, computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing is the definitions of cad uh, cam and uh, this has become very popular uh in the in the field of dentistry since the last 25 years it can be applied for all sorts of restorations uh, right from small inlays to onlays to veneers the crowns and also fixed partial dentures then um, you can also uh, mill uh, uh, implant abutments and for the construction of full mouth uh, 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 cases wherein you know the entire uh, hybrid processes can be uh, milled and fabricated so but but then the cad cam ha, was developed you know uh, basically to overcome three kinds of challenges that is uh, to ensure adequate strength why do we need adequate strength what were the difficulties uh, that people had in, uh, in, um, you know um, uh, faced while doing manually built up ceramic crowns because sometimes what happens is while building up ceramic portions there are chances wherein in one part of the crown they we might end up building more ceramic because you are still doing it manually the amount of ceramic powder that you are going to coat over the uh, metal coping and then while sintering it how and while trimming it how much of material uh, ceramic thickness is there uniformly on the coping cannot be uh, very definite when you're doing it manually 
so there are chances where we compromise and you can see you would have definitely encountered patients where when they when they bite on the crown and uh, you would have seen that the metal would have been exposed that means to say that an adequate amount of ceramic was not added for that so the strength was definitely a challenge and then to make it look more like an as uh, natural naturally appearing restoration so uh, when you look at the uh, the ones which have created manually to create the grooves and fissures uh, i myself have a personally uh, personally i have an experience wherein you know um, i have sent uh, a, a crown a single crown to a lab a very well known uh, an, a renowned lab in uh, india so when uh, if if i was able to compare the difference between a computer uh, uh, aided uh, manufactured crown the cad cam uh, uh, manufactured the zirconia crown and a pfm crown which was done manually uh, the serve the ceramic was built up in the laboratory by my technician looking at the appearance itself uh, there was definitely a lot of difference the kind of grooves uh, and the fissures in the molar crown that were created by the software was much more uh, uh, appreci uh, appreciable when compared to the ones which were done by the uh, technicians so uh, if if the same thing applies to your anterior restoration if there was so much of difference in your posterior restorations in a molar crown then you can imagine what uh it may what kind of difference it can make for your anterior restoration and next is your time in regard to your uh you know technical uh, issues when you're doing it manually there is a casting procedure that is that that is involved so definitely i i think uh, you must be aware about the casting procedure so if you are doing a crown uh by the regular conventional methods so you have to build up a coping you have to make a, a wax pattern out of it and then a tech, a, the conventional casting has to be done and once the casting has been done the uh, crucible has to cool down and uh, once you have obtained the entire cast and you cannot uh, you cannot cast a single crown definitely to save on material you must wait until at least there are you know some five six crowns together which can be done so and you have to cut off the metal the there is a lost of a lot of uh, wastage in the amount of metal that is being used uh, in the conventional casting techniques then you have the amount of time that is required to trim and polish the coping so there is a lot of effort that is required and when when you look at okay even if it is requiring a lot of effort to do such kind of crowns but the amount of accuracy that you get from it is definitely way much lesser when compared to that of a cad cam milled coping because the in the cad cam milled uh, coping the finish lines are um, demarcated very clearly and there is no shrinkage of the metal when compared to that of your conventional base so the amount of time that you're taking to print a metal coping is much lesser when compared to that of your conventional way of doing so uh, it so with the latest advance advances that are have happening so all that you need to do is just make a digital impression once you have done with your crown preparation make the impression and send it they can just uh, you know look at the uh, scanned uh, impression they can on the computer they can just uh, do the designing and the milling can be immediately done and um, Uh, it can be you know uh, built up with uh, ceramic immediately or uh, it can be uh, again uh, coated with ceramic with the help of uh, uh, ceramic blocks and uh, apart from that what you can also can do is uh, they can also you can uh, what once once the scan has been obtained they can create a model uh, from the data so this is more accurate so uh, you also know that while you're pouring the cast itself there might be a lot of errors that can uh, happen so the model can be constructed uh, uh, you know um, uh, in the in the data itself or it can be obtained from the impression either ways you can do and the, the amount of laboratory work that is to be uh, done while fabricating a crown is much lesser when compared to that of your uh, 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 convention way of doing it okay so uh, on an overview uh, of cad cam 
you know that um, once you have got your intraoral scanner you place it in that particular area of interest where you want to scan and uh, the prepared tooth structure or the prepared uh, abutment teeth you scan them you hold it in that position you make the patient to sit upright you hold the scanner and begin to scan each uh, section in a segment wise uh, for you be you begin a uh, quadrant wise and uh, so once your scan uh, has been done uh, it gives you a bleep so uh, after every uh, 30 seconds you move to the next segment and uh, the entire oral cavity is scanned and this, this image is um, uh, stitched together and it is uh, designed on the computer software. So, so once the image has been obtained then the restorations can be milled from uh, prefabricated blocks of porcelain. So you have these prefabricated blocks of uh, porcelain which you see and uh, from this the crown can be uh, milled. So so milling is nothing but you just actually cut down the excess and you uh, make a crown out of it. So uh, these are there are a lot of other techni technical terms uh, and uh, for which I will also share a, a video on uh, CAD CAM based dentistry uh, tomorrow. So you can have a look at that as well. So which will definitely make it more uh, clear for you. And uh, so once the restoration has been uh, obtained, the polishing techniques can be carried out in the conventional way as well and uh, so once uh, the uh, polishing has been done you can just uh, send it over and uh, you know you can cement the crown in the patient mouth so this is your uh, CAD CAM uh, setup it's a diff different kinds of uh, uh, machines can be obtained so this is how you do the intraoral scanning and once you have uh, obtained the intraoral scan you can see that the edentulous space is visible like this and um, so this is how you begin to also decide where you want to place the contact points. You can see that uh, in uh, the fourth quadrant, so three is your uh, pontic uh, space where it's edential is and your prepared tooth structure has to be clearly demarcated like this and this is how your scan looks like. So once it has been ready, then you place you. Th these are those uh, ceramic or porcelain blocks which are inserted inside, and this is your milling machine. This mills the um, new crown, and you get the uh, entire crown or the FPD. So there are different kinds of systems. That is office-based uh, devices, the Serex system, the E4D dentist system, then Cadent Itro, then the Lava Chair Side Oral Scanner. Uh, as well so based on whatever is available for you and the ease of doing it you can uh, you know use different kinds of technologies okay and when compared to um, uh, the uh, way of uh, building up ceramics you know that uh, there are three ways first you have to build up the enamel and then you have to be, uh, that is your uh, uh, after your enamel your dentin opaque uh, and then dentin second layer and then you have to polish it so when uh, in, instead of uh, building up ceramic in layer wise uh, you have the ceramic blocks so you have three different uh, companies in that uh, in ceram the most uh, commonly used right now in ceram procera and uh, um, empress so these are the most uh, famous uh, kind famous uh, companies which have the ceramic blocks from which the uh, you know uh, crowns can be fabricated so apart from uh, and as a part of your FPD there is uh, gingival retraction uh, you I have already explained about the importance of gingival retraction fluid control uh, that was a different uh, chapter altogether so uh, as a part of your fixed partial dentures when you are practicing we should also always ensure that gingival retraction uh, has to be practiced so that the prepared tooth structure and the unprepared tooth structure that is underlying the finish line both of them have to be recorded in your impression for which gingival retraction uh, techniques have to be used and uh, as a part of gingival retraction uh, earlier we have been using cords cord uh, a gingival retraction cord of different size based on whether it is anterior or posterior is placed in the sulcus and uh, if this material is impregnated with uh, with a solution um, you know a blood thin uh, 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 blood coagulant so if you place it in the sulcus it prevents bleeding and it also retracts the uh, gingiva 
but there are also some times uh, where you might uh, end up pushing the gingival retraction cord too further into the sulcus area in and it might injure the uh, gingival tissue uh, so uh, in those cases what you've got to do is that uh, um, you know you can use easier techniques of doing it that is your uh, uh, gingival retraction paste so in your uh, gingival retraction paste you have this newer company expasil gingival uh, tissue paste which you just have to uh, apply the paste over the gingival uh, the marginal gingiva and this uh, helps in uh, retracting the gingiva it uh, you know it uh, keeps the sulcus open and then uh, once you can just dry it and you can make go ahead with the impression making so uh, and this expasil uh, retraction paste is mainly composed of materials like uh, kaolin and uh, aluminum chloride aluminum chloride acts as the hemostatic agent and kaolin is more for the rigidity of the responsible for the rigidity of the uh, materials and uh, next is uh, improvement in alginates earlier al you know that uh, you know how it feels like when uh, you're placing alginate impression material in each other when you were practicing so to improvise the taste and uh, to overcome allergies so different kind of uh, uh, improvements have been made the taste flavor it was mango mint and spearmint and uh, uh, based on the set you have normal set and uh, that is uh, hydrogenum neocolloid usually al alginate sets very fast then you have dust free alginoplast then paste form also alginate then alginate uh, containing microbials chlorohexidin and uh, quaternary aluminium i think once this covid season is over and uh, you're back again to college and you're back again to your clinics and you must look at something like an alginate containing microbials the chlorohexidin uh, uh, alginate so that uh, prevent uh, further any kind of uh, you know infections then coming to your re uh, removal uh, partial dentures in your removal partial dentures you know that earlier it was just the acrylic partial dentures and then after that we have come up with uh, cast partial dentures that is your metal reinforced dentures and after which is your uh, precision attachments precision attachments are also not very new uh, it's been carried out from the last uh, few decades and uh, so, um, what is this precision attachment? An attachment is a connector consisting of two or more components and one component is connected to a tooth and a tooth or root or a, also an implant and the other component is connected to a process. So, if you look at this uh, particular uh, image, you see that there are um, two crowns, that is two premolars have been prepared uh, to re restore two missing molars so what they've done is they've prepared the crown they've made the coping and the coping the metal coping will have also an extra structure towards the uh, edential space it has a ball like attachment and uh, and on that metal coping again ceramic is built up and this looks more or less like a crown only this part is your removable so instead of making a big flange which is extending from the fourth quadrant all the way to the third quadrant what you can do is give an attachment to the coping to the metal coping itself and this ha uh, has like a ball and socket mechanism or a button type mechanism wherein the removable partial denture can be just seated on it and it can be fixed so there are different types of attachments wherein you can give an intracoronal attachment or an extracoronal attachment. If it is an intracoronal attachment, yes, it's an invasive procedure. You have to prepare some amount of tooth structure uh, in the enamel itself wherein the attachment will go and be seated inside or otherwise on the coping itself, you can make the extracoronal attachment. So uh, th these are different kinds of attachment as you see key and uh, keyway. So, if you know that your abutment is not a very strong abutment and uh, it has a poor prognosis, it has uh, 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 just a fair prognosis, you, you, you are unable to uh, make, uh, make a decision whether you can, uh, you know, have too many forces on these abutment teeth. What you can do is you can use key and keyway. So, this is how it looks like. So, this reduces the amount of force that is there on a uh, apartment tooth but definitely since this is like a cantilever uh, the amount of force that will be on these abutment teeth will be definitely more than what is normal and this is your ball and socket one which i have shown in the earlier picture and you also have these bar and clip attachments so these precision attachments uh, 
they increase the advantages is that it is more like a fixed kind of a restoration and uh, the ease of wearing it is uh, uh, very much improved and the patient will not have the discomfort of wearing uh, a removable denture it will not fall out for, it will not dislodge there there is increased stability for such kind of dentures and uh, while uh, uh, mastication also the patients will not have any issues but the the, the, these are some of the advantages but what are the disadvantages is that sometimes once the uh, ball, suppose uh, once there is a wear and tear in these kind of uh, mechanisms the entire thing will have to be replaced so it's not like a long lasting uh, option for such kind of cases and also the disadvantages is that by using the abutment teeth you are preparing the natural tooth structure and giving a crown on this so by doing this you are causing uh, harm to these uh, normal uh, teeth so you might if the these teeth are affected and they have uh, secondary caries so you might end up uh, you know having to uh, prepare more tooth uh, sorry you have to uh, remove the entire thing and redo the uh, entire processes so that's the issue with the uh, attachment so also way of uh, and also uh, an important uh, thing in the remo removal partial dentures is that uh, by, by using uh, implant systems so you can also use uh, implant supported removal dentures instead of completely making a, a mucosa based uh, implant uh, mucosa based processes you can place two implants in the distal most uh, uh, area and use them and convert it into a class 3 situation and uh, construct fabric, uh, uh, sorry construct uh, processes and next coming to your uh, implant uh, gui based uh, uh, guided surgery so in your implant uh, dentistry you have uh, uh, by by uh, in normal uh, way of doing the surgery that is just make uh, an incision and uh, you know remove the flap and then uh, use your drill system you would have seen the implant kit so you use a pilot drill and then uh, after using the pilot drill you use uh, the first uh, few drills based on the implant size and then placement of implant and uh, closure of flap then second stage surgery and uh, healing abutment and all of that so this is a conventional way of doing it when looking at guided uh, surgery we have um, lesser steps of doing it it is more accurate so in a guided surgery um, uh, i will just show you the picture yes so if you look at this image so uh, this is an opg so the opg uh, is uh, is uh, taken in if you look at the look, look at the placement of the implants they are very accurately and play, uh, you know stably placed they are very parallel to the uh, remaining teeth structures also this is because the cbct that they would have obtained has been uh, subject to a software analysis and uh, you know um, the position of the implant is decided way earlier uh, way ahead of uh, placement of the implant and uh, after which a guide a surgically uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, a guide is fabricated a guide is seated on the mucosa and you have these uh, uh, holes of the guide where through which the implant is uh, placed which is which can be seen in the next image and uh, so the implant placement is very accurate the amount of time that you take for placing the implant with the help of guided surgery is that you know that the, the, those are the positions where the implant has to go so the amount of time taken is very less there is no requirement for second stage surgery once the implant has been placed this there's, there's just a punch of the uh, soft tissue that is taken out and the implant is placed so you can place a healing abutment immediately and uh, you don't have to cover the tissue you don't have to do the second stage surgery and uh, it is less invasive so these kind of surgeries are uh, very accurate as well so you can see that the implants have been placed very nicely and um, this also removes the need for any uh, angulated abutments i know all these technical terms might uh, sound very uh, you know confusing but uh, that you will be understanding only if you are going to involve yourself in uh, implant dentistry at a later phase but just to make you to uh, understand and familiarize that this is the way of doing it yeah so the implant positions are uh, um, decided and implants are placed and this is how your implants will look like
so that's the end of uh, today's lecture and i hope that i was able to uh, explain to you uh, what are the uh you know important uh, advances and uh, i i hope i was able to explain to you the uh the disadvantages of using the manual techniques as well uh in my lecture and if there are any doubts uh, please do revert back to me and i hope you have a good day thank you